This discussion is coming from a show-only enjoyer with very little knowledge of the Wheel of Time novels, but I am aware that the first installment of the book series came out a few years before George Martin published The Game of Thrones. There is no ripping off each other here, but clearly taking inspiration from Tolkien's Lord of the Rings while making these fantasy novels. Oh and by the way, a new Lord of the Rings show is coming to Amazon later this year. Prime subscribers are eating good. I'm sure most of you who frequent Twitch streams have seen Amazon Prime push the Wheel of Time with a crazy amount of ads. In the middle of it, a very bold statement stands out from the rest of the 30 second spot, calling the Wheel of Time a true successor to Game of Thrones. But that's just marketing trying to sensationalize a very positive review by IGN. My thoughts on the show are not as positive. No, this is not a rival to Game of Thrones. And I think you should be suspicious of anyone making that claim, even after the train wreck finale. Game of Thrones just came out swinging way too strong to have competitors anytime soon. Comparing The Wheel of Time to The Witcher series on Netflix is a bit more realistic. Another show sticking with an 8 episode season format with very similar themes. Characters are so much more complex in The Witcher, and this world feels much more fantastical. The lead roles are memorable, even with the adaptation being far from perfect. In both The Wheel of Time and The Witcher, a prophesized hero will be born to save the world from ending. But there really isn't much else going on in the Wheel of Time. Monsters in the Wheel of Time are just fodder. An arrow from a random soldier can take one out. The threats in the Witcher are far more intimidating. So I wouldn't even call the Wheel of Time a true rival to the Witcher, which in my opinion is still nowhere near the quality of Game of Thrones. Where you can argue the merits of a Game of Thrones rivalry come in the political schemes. A location called the White Tower can be compared to King's Landing, where anyone can be listening or watching and you can't trust anyone. But like everything else in the Wheel of Time, it's laughably shallow and quickly abandoned before developing anything. Don't expect a Littlefinger-esque character here. The main characters are so one-dimensional and bland, it's impossible to care for any of them. You can find these guys in any RPG playing the role of a background NPC, but in the Wheel of Time, they have all the camera time in the world. Recycled themes of distrust are brought up, then seemingly resolved, then brought up again. This pattern got old and fast. So many times, I couldn't help but tune out the dialogue. Unlike Game of Thrones, the show doesn't try to reel in casual viewers with cheap sex scenes that usually just end up being distracting. Amazon's probably just trying to keep that TV rating far from 18 plus though. I don't think it was a creative decision. To the show's credit, there was one moment where things started getting interesting, four episodes in, with the introduction of a new character. Think Spanish accent for those who already watched the show. I just wish there was more of him to get us away from the main cast. The five potential heroes behave like high school children with how quickly they turn on each other for the weakest conflicts. And when some real conflict arises where their lives are on the line, plot armor is so strong, you can't take any threat seriously. Chemistry between the love interests throughout the season is unbearably weak. Nothing stood out with the sound, editing, or directing. The actors, when given something in the script to work with, did fine, with Rosamund Pike as Moraine standing out from the rest, clearly a veteran. The flashbacks were also refreshing in comparison to the main timeline plot. If the flashbacks are a good indication of some well-written lore, which again I have no idea if that's true because I haven't cracked open a book, maybe there's some hope for the show in the future, because they're very blatantly teasing more seasons to come. Trying to explain the awkward pacing of the show was hard for me. We get to the end goal very fast, but very little happens along the way aside from boring conflict that could be taken from any other genre of television. So while things are getting done extremely fast, it still feels sluggish and uninteresting. The concept of the Wheel of Time is brought up now and again, but never delved into. If a series has no other unique themes, you should probably have some focus on the title of your series, and not rely on Amazon picking up more seasons to explain later. Usually a good show or movie adaptation from a book series will make me dive into the story. I'll start reading for hours, and when it gets tiring, I'll pop open some lore videos. Zero urge to do that here with the Wheel of Time. I don't know what the hell the Wheel of Time is. Something to do with cyclical patterns, I'm sure. It's sometimes comedic how simple the made-up terms are in the show. The evil antagonist is just called the Dark One. His human allies, the Dark Friends. I thought I was mishearing the first time it was mentioned. But nope, they're actually called Dark Friends. Magic is called the One Power. For a show with all the main characters being the most powerful beings in the world, magic isn't explored much. This one can be forgiven I guess, cause the potential heroes never get much of a chance for a training arc with their guide Moraine. Without going into spoilers, there is a dramatic character arc that we're supposed to believe happens to one of the five during the middle of the season, but there isn't actually any character development, just visual changes with the makeup over episodes. 
As for the visual effects, it's so hard for me to be critical over it when it comes to shows. You're not going to get the same kind of budget as a fantasy film, especially in the first season. So you can't be comparing this to The Hobbit, especially in the first season. So instead of nitpicking the CGI, I'm just going to say there really was a lack of magic for such a grand story. Just your occasional white and black swirls when convenient. I'm late to the whole Wheel of Time party because I was hesitant to invest 8 hours into a series with mixed reviews. I even made a community post here on YouTube asking if it's worth watching and again it was split so I gave it a chance. And it wasn't very good. If I had to rate it out of 10 it would be a solid 5. Super forgettable. If you're looking for a fantasy world for some good old escapism, this will do the trick if you're out of options. Just don't expect anything innovative or even cool fantastical races and creatures roaming around. One group of boring monster fodder and magic users attacking with lame swirls. Hurts being so negative, but those ads can't keep shoving down the dumb Game of Thrones successor quote down our throats without pushback. The exact quote from IGN was Amazon Prime's video The Wheel of Time provides an excellent adaptation of the Robert Jordan series that could be a true successor to Game of Thrones. This makes that Twitch ad even look more dumb. Chop up the words to make it out of context and try to fool as many people as possible. I'm interested in hearing what fans of the book thought of the series. I just hope I'm not gonna hear, give it some more time, cause one season should be enough to get things rolling. It's not like I'm talking about the premiere episode. I do hope it pulls in viewers Amazon is hoping for, cause more fantasy shows are welcome. After Game of Thrones' financial success story, with crazy amounts of money poured into the project, Netflix had the balls to pick up The Witcher, and now we have Lord of the Rings on the way. As much as I didn't care for The Wheel of Time, another success is good for nerds. If you book readers think the upcoming season 2 will be a better viewing experience, there's a small chance I'll bother with it. But for the percentage of you that unlike me enjoyed the show, good news, season 2 has already been in the filming process for months. Right now, I'm up for new show recommendations. I've always preferred this new norm of shorter season shows to elevate quality and give the writer some time to breathe. But it'll be some time until we get Lord of the Rings. In the land of Mordor. Where the shadows lie. And House of the Dragon this year. Dreams didn't make us kings. Dragons did. So I'll go back to rereading some of Song of Ice and Fire chapters in the meantime. Thanks for watching guys. I'll try to be more positive next time.